Well, one of the biggest policy fights of the last year involved revamping New Jersey's youth mental health system, meant to beef up services for kids continuing to navigate the emotional tolls of the pandemic. But state officials received major pushback from education advocates and parents who worried moving away from the current school-based model to a regional hub-and-spoke approach would leave many kids behind. For more on the proposal and its future in the new year, I'm joined by mental health writer Bobby Breyer. So, Bobby, the state has poured millions, tens of millions of dollars into uh, revamping the mental health system for kids. But what's the real blowback about? Yeah, advocates have told me right now uh, what their main concerns are is that this uh, current program uh, in, that they have in place throughout the 90 schools uh, will essentially uh, be replaced by uh, what they're saying as a, a not as effective program or one that they're highly skeptical of uh, that would uh, would replace this current one. Uh, essentially, um, there have there has been a, a major victory, as we know, um, as advocates have said, uh, to keep the current school based use programs in place. Uh, for at least the next year uh, while the state uh, rolls out their current, uh, what they're calling their hub and spoke model or their NJ4S program. Uh, now, after that uh, program is completely rolled out and there are proposals going on now uh, to see who is able to staff those hubs, uh, well, advocates have told me that they're skeptical uh, that this program uh, would completely uh, be as effective as the one uh, that they have in place now. And so that's really where, where the main concern and the main main blowback is coming from. Well, that's interesting because there's there's a lot of national support for the school-based model as well, but the state right. says, listen, we can reach more kids if we go to this regional approach. What does the data show? What does that tell? The data has showed, um, from what I have seen, that the most effective approach uh, is the current school-based youth services programs. Uh, essentially, uh, what backs that up is the fact that uh, students and teachers or uh, clinicians uh, and therapists uh, form relationships with students uh, that enable a level of trust uh, that they may not find anywhere else um, outside of the school. And, and so that's something uh, that the data points to, uh, especially uh, for folks uh, who may not have access uh, to mental health services, uh, to things like college application essay help, or uh, even a food pantry or clothing uh, a clothing drive uh, that they would not have outside of school. So that's really uh, the, the main points that the data points to. Uh, and this is the, a program that's been um, effective uh, in multiple states throughout the country as well. What else through your reporting did you find the state would need to keep up with this crisis? There's been an emphasis on hiring more behavioral health workers to get them you know, into those jobs to address the needs. What else, right. though, is missing? You know, from what I've uh, spoken, from what I've heard from from uh, multiple sources is that really uh, the, the lack right now is um, in child psychiatrists throughout the state, uh, that there could be more of, of uh, therapists in general, but also especially with child psychiatrists, there, there needs to be more of an emphasis um, on getting folks um, into those programs, into those fields, and then out um, into the workforce. Uh, now, the, the, the New Jersey State Legislature has proposed laws uh, that would enhance uh, those those behavioral health workforces, uh, especially geared uh, towards uh, psychiatrists and child psychiatrists. Uh, it may be uh, months or years before we start to see the benefits uh, of those laws into effect, but that's essentially the main gaps that I'm seeing right now. Um, and also the fact that there are other programs throughout the state uh, that do not receive uh, DCF funding, Department of Children and Families funding uh, for these uh, school-based youth services programs, uh, but they do have their own mental health uh, service program. So another fear would be that uh, if, if this new program is in place, uh, these current programs that don't receive DCS, DCF funding uh, would, would have a hard time operating um, anymore uh, on their own. So, th so those are kind of the, the, the main the main points uh, that are gaps right here right now. Yeah. Well, and of course, the state was fortunate enough to have a lot of federal money to play with this year, but moving right. forward, that'll certainly be an issue. Bobby Breyer for us. Thanks so much, Bobby. Yes. Thank you, Brianna.